So I'm Danielle Boucher. Um, I'm a visual artist, uh, amongst other things, but that's what I'm focused on at the moment. Um, a lot of my background is in community arts and performing. Um, so yeah, at the moment, my main focus is on surface pattern and print uh, for product and interiors and creating spaces, I guess, is, is where I'm going. Creating spaces where people um, can be energized and can come together and, you know, that kind of add to quality of life, I suppose, through pattern and design. Um, but yeah, my background is, um, so I, I mean, I've always been part of a creative family. I've grown up in creative communities. Um, so yeah, it's kind of, it's always been a part of my life. So I see my practice very much as being intertwined with a, a way of living, I suppose. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, very interesting. Um, I mean, talking of creating spaces, sort of. Hey. <laughs> Um, we can see, just about see the third, so uh, you created for me uh, these incredible artworks. This is from the um, the art installation that I had at Middlesbrough Art Weekend yeah. in 2019. Um, and yeah, we turned that space, it was an old Thomas Cook uh, unit. Yeah. <laughs> right on the, uh, the main shopping centre. It was really, really interesting that, uh, you know, the engagement that we got there um, mm. because of where it was situated. Um, and yeah, including, of course, Elvis, who enjoyed it, <laughs> came back the next day bearing gifts. Yeah. Just felt, you know, even though what I was doing was, you know, this similar kind of um, interview project with an AI interface. Um, it just seemed ridiculous to have, like, say, had an art installation and no art in it, and yeah. uh, it was absolutely <laughs> incredible. And and you know, I I couldn't have done it without you. And oh. I will never forget, like, you perching on the top of that, <laughs> ladder, like, you know, uh, absolutely terrifying. But you, it you was know. a very very rickety ladder. But you know, I mean, that's that's part of the it's part of the fun, isn't it? It's the I mean yeah, creating spaces and, and sort of getting involved in creative projects always has that sort of edgy element, I think, of, you know, the unknown or, um, you know, sort of having to go out on a limb and, and try something different. So it, it sort of sums that up in a way. <laughs> yes, we, 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 definitely, uh, we definitely take risks. Yeah. <laughs> but, yeah. Um, so, um, can you, I'm really interested uh, to hear more about your kind of technique, like uh, about the, uh, the practicalities of the way that you go about creating uh, your patterns, like where the ideas come from and, and how you um, realise them. Okay. Ooh. Um, how I go about creating, I don't know. I, I guess, I mean, growing up, um, you know, I was surrounded by all my aunties were, and my grandma, all terrible hoarders. So I grew up around a lot of, you know, wonderful 50s and 60s kind of patterns and dresses and, you know, um, <clears throat> furniture. And so that's always been something that's inspired me, those kind of um, sort of sleek lines and, and quite sort of minimalist uh, sort of patterns and and that sort of mid-century modern kind of style of textiles so that's that's always been my inspiration and I suppose that I, I only really realized in in the last sort of few years that that's very much my palette and I don't know I guess I I see pattern and I'm attracted to pattern in everything so it could be cracks in the pavement it could be uh, I get a lot of inspiration from nature as well from uh, you know from the shapes of flowers and leaves but I'm, I'm very much uh, into abstract and, and stylized sort of design um, so yeah often that's where it starts you know it can even just be like you know a chair or um, but I've always, you know, I go to a restaurant and I'm, I'm like, you know, they've got a lovely design on the serviettes and I'm like, ooh, 
so yeah that's I guess that's what inspires me a lot of um sort of mid-century modern art sort of that abstract expressionism uh so Miro and um Calder and um Lucien Day who was an amazing mid-century textile artist um so that's what inspires me um my process I yeah so I do start with with actual sort of you know a flower or something um but I tend to move away from drawing the actual flower fairly quickly which I got into trouble for at uni <laughs> I went straight to sort of abstracting it but you know I had to go through the process um yeah it's just playing really I play with pattern until I find something that I like and then it just kind of goes through a process of, of often sort of just pulling the the strongest lines of the design out of that um so yeah a lot of the stuff that I've done in the last few years has been more repeat pattern but I um during lockdown I've sort of moved away from that a bit just because oh, well I started doing some lino prints so sort of a different process uh which has been that's been good it's yeah it's been something a bit different so yeah, they were really lush. I really loved your lino print. Oh, thank you. <laughs> really evocative. I don't even know what of. It's like, it's, uh, it's kind of made me feel nostalgic for something that's never existed in my past. Oh, <laughs> well, that's good. Well, yeah, I guess that means, yeah, that's got a bit of me in it then. <laughs> yes. Yeah, I suppose it does. Yeah, absolutely. Um. So, um. It's like really into like, you know, we kind of had an opposite upbringing. Um, I'm really interested to know um, because you have, you know, you have such a background in it. I suppose mm. you haven't really thought that much about um, uh, living, a, living any other life. Because, you know, so many yeah. projects have, uh, were kind of forced to to go and do the sensible subjects like the mm -hmm. we've kind of clawed our way back into art but you clearly come from a background where that's always been key and yeah. kind of thinking about that in terms of yourself and your family like why why have you immersed yourselves in that kind of life and um why do you do what you do and what kind of role do you think that plays in in wider society um well so yeah so my dad studied architecture and left with a month to go on purpose so that he had nothing to fall back on uh and went and started a rock and roll band <laughs> uh, my mum uh has a background in classical ballet uh she was very very good she would have been in the sydney dance company except she you know had me uh, she was also a primary school teacher um so yeah i um i got a bit lost there um yeah i guess it's just it's always been a part of my life um and although you know i was sort of encouraged at school to go and do law or languages or something like that but yeah that you know i i think i was always surrounded by creative people so in a way i couldn't really imagine doing anything else um you know, so we always had extra people living in our house and um, I knew that there were other options, but yeah, it is back to front in my family. It would, would have been a great disappointment if I'd gone to do law, you know. <laughs> um, I did consider doing other things, but yeah, just, I think I've, I've, I've always seen, I guess I've seen the way that living creatively, um, you know, so that has an impact on on people's lives and being able to offer that to other people as well. So my family's always been very much involved in community projects um, and just sort of seeing, you know, the, the gift that creativity is to people, I suppose, and seeing the positive impact that that has where people can, you know, find expression and, you know through movement can kind of just release you know sort of anxiety or whatever it is that or they can just escape for a little while or um so yeah having grown up with 
with seeing the impact that that has, I think, yeah, I just, I can't imagine doing anything else. And um, yeah, I think more recently, it's actually been important that I realized that how creativity is, is something I should use for my own expression as well. Um, so that's been kind of a, a new and scary part of my journey, I think, is, is thinking, well, what is my own practice? Because I've always worked with other people. It's, you know, I've always been very collaborative. Um, and yeah, so it's been about finding my own design expression. So that's, you know, the lino prints and the surface pattern has kind of come from that, I suppose. Yeah. Great. Well, it's, you know, it's really, you know, I, I think your work is fantastic. Um, so, so um, I mean, we've kind of covered really how lockdowns affected you, um, but I'm really interested, where do you want to take it from here? Like, I mean, obviously it's difficult to plan much at the moment, but, mm -hmm. but you know, a bit more into the long-term future, where, where do you kind of see yourself? Um, I'm really not very good at long-term planning. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I think, I mean, I think I do need to sort of come up with a more solid game plan, but, you know, because my life's always been sort of going from one project and, you know, sort of uh, through that project, something else will come up because, you know, the people involved in that will go, oh, hey, you know, I really liked what you did there, could you come and do this? And, you know, that's ended up with me doing outdoor theatre, you know, uh, making a feature film, being in a, a techno band, um, you know, so that's how my life's always gone. So I find it really difficult to kind of go, oh, this is what I want to do and I'm going to head for that. But I, I do want to sort of build up a portfolio of work and get, you know, a, particularly through lockdown, you know, the need to sort of have an online presence, have a portfolio that people can see. Um, I do... I do want to work towards, um, you know, exhibiting my work. I think I've struggled to think of myself as an artist with a capital A, um, but sort of looking at how my surface pattern design, how I can look at that as a standalone piece of art or an installation. So I want to move more. I would like to, you know, when I was saying sort of creating spaces, so making massive like sculptures that that use sort of form and pattern so sort of shining light through so you know to create sort of pattern shadows on the walls or to change the space that they're in so yeah i think it's, it's it sounds a bit vague i do i do have definite ideas but yeah the vague idea is to change the spaces that people gather in um that yeah I don't know um <laughs> yeah I, I can see you changing spaces that people gather in but I can also see you like uh transforming people's home environments you know yeah yeah certainly there's there's work that I you know I desperately want to um wallpaper my whole house in um oh, oh I would love to do that yeah I mean that's you know because obviously we spend a lot of time in our homes so creating a space that that actually sort of makes you feel good and positive and that you wake up to and you feel you know it's it's vibrant and it and and also you know you can feel relaxed in that space or and and I guess the thing with lighting is the impact of lighting in a space as well and how you know if you're sitting in a room full of people and the light's too bright or it's a bit awkward or the way the chairs are set out is a bit awkward, sort of creating space. And I guess this comes from my community background as well. Those, you know, sort of wonderful memories of spaces or, or being around the campfire or, you know, a candlelit room and how that creates a space where people can, you know, feel like they have a conversation or they, you know, sort of creativity comes, you know, someone gets the guitar out or so, yeah, creating those kind of spaces yeah ah oh, the good old <laughs> days the good old days uh, yeah um can't wait can't wait to uh be sat around a campfire with again yes quickly <laughs> you know your good self mm -hmm. that would be to do wonderful. any of that kind of thing thankfully and of course some dancing as well it has to be dancing 
Absolutely. Well, the, I mean, at the end of all this, you know, when we can, that's the idea is to uh, put on an all day or an all night down at the auxiliary involving in some way all 250 interviewees. Um, yeah. And, uh, you know, I mean, obviously our installations and, and sound installations and that kind of thing, but also sort of in the morning um, workshops and seminars and quite sensible stuff and then leading into sort of readings and performances and then, you know, a huge banging party. Um, yes. <laughs> no, 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 I'll be I there. And, um, uh, Donny Jeves has kindly donated a sound system and it's definitely loud enough. Um, yes, I can, I can vouch for that. <laughs> to fill the space. So we're good, we're good. As soon as we get word, we're out, out we go. And uh, yeah, absolutely. We'll have, yeah. we'll have a massive, massive party. Sounds good to me. Well, it's been absolutely lovely to talk to you. Shame it's on on this. Um, and uh, yeah, um, let's let's just wait until we can get out there and and raise a glass. Absolutely, or three. <laughs> Bye. It's a bottle. Yeah. A bottle. Head removed and replaced by a couple of optics. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> All right, Danielle. Take care. Thank you, Lisa. Bye.